Hello, it's Mio and welcome to this draw with me video where I'll be filling a page in my sketchbook. I've been really enjoying making more physical art that is not digital like painting and making sculptures but I have been kind of neglecting my sketchbook so I thought it was time to get back into it and record a little sketch with me video. So for this page the idea was to make a screaming cat and then a lady where I would be testing out some more dramatic shading. So I start by sketching it all out and there was a lot of trial and error that I cut out of this video because I just could not get the screaming cat right and by the end of the sketch it still doesn't really look right, it still looks a little off and almost a little bit creepy but I have to kind of trust the process on this and hope that I can fix it with markers later on. For the portrait of the woman, I also would say that you kind of have to trust the process on it because it also looks a tad creepy uh, when I draw it, or maybe just a little weird, I don't know, because I'm trying to go for a slightly more realistic style than I would used to. I tend to draw more cartoony faces that look really sweet and really like a bit more round and smooth, but I wanted to kind of make a very dramatic shading and a portrait that looked a little bit more real and maybe a little bit more dramatic, if that makes sense. Here it is time to start with the markers. So I also in addition to wanting to make this portrait with dramatic lighting, I also wanted some dramatic and kind of weird colors. So I started by adding some yellow over almost the whole face before going in with this kind of more orangey yellowish tone for the other half of the face. Or that was the idea at least. But like with most of my ideas that when it comes to art, I change it up. And this time I decided that the whole face should be this orangey color because I just liked it a lot better. Uh, except for the eyes, of course, because I think it's going to be hard to go with lighter colors on top of the more darker orange. And the reason I did that is that it just looked too patchy and I still think it looks patchy, but that's okay. Um, and after that, I decided to go in with a purple color because I wanted the portrait to kind of be hot and cold. So the lighter sharp parts of the face are supposed to be warm while the other parts are supposed to be cold. So here I'm adding in that purple color where the shadows are supposed to be and I think this might have been a mistake because these colors don't really fit very well on top of each other and they're making this really patchy uh, look. So I decided to just go with it and hope that I can fix it with uh, coloring pencils and then I go in with the coloring pencils as you can see right here and I try to lighten up the lighter colors. I add this red in between the purple and the yellow parts and then I shade with uh, different types of purples and a little bit of black as well. I feel like this whole page is very much a trust the process type of deal, especially this portrait. And to be completely honest, I didn't really trust the process for most of it because I was hating it and hating every part of it and I feel like it kind of started the thing that started all of the insecurities was when I put that blue color on top of the yellow. Because it just doesn't fit, it's very patchy, they don't layer well together, and I didn't like it. But here's me trying to redeem myself, and I just keep on going even though I really wanted to quit and just give up on this. But weirdly enough, even if I felt kind of like it was really ugly while making it, now looking back at the process and the footage that I have, I don't think it's that bad. It's, I mean, it's a little off and I do not like how patchy it looks um, with the markers on top of each other. But other than that, it's not, it's not bad at all. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to try with this portrait is that I really wanted some really harsh lines as well as soft lines. So you can see me add these kind of more rough straight lines that are a little diagonal. Uh, under the nose, a little bit under the eye, and then on the neck because I wanted to make it a little bit more dramatic where the shadow and light kind of touch each other. Here I am drawing the lips and I've paled a lot on the lips 
mostly the placement because they could have been a little bit more upwards or they could have been closer to the nose because now she's getting a little bit of a small chin that doesn't really make sense and a little bit too much space between her nose and her lips so but i that was too late i couldn't fix that un unless i made her lips incredibly big so that's just how our lips are gonna have to be and then here i'm drawing the hair which i draw really messily with just straight black because i wanted the face to be a little bit more rendered while the hair is more messy uh, and unfinished because i really like that look and i've done it on some of my other portraits and yeah i like it then i also gave her this red kind of cloth around her face because i wanted her to kind of look like a farmer or maybe a little bit of like you know a little cottage core vibe because that's kind of what i decided that i wanted the feel of the page to be here i am coloring the eyes and i feel like her eyes they are incredibly dead she looks dead in the face she almost looks like a doll uh, but she's all right it's not bad per se but i would have liked there to be a little bit more life a little bit more light in her eyes here i am doing the little last detail which is some highlight with this a white marker that I have so I add some dots here and there just to try to bring her a little bit more to life and um, mostly on the nose and around the nose a little bit inside the eye tiny dot on the forehead tiny dot on the cheek you know you know the drill dot here and there <laughs> here it is time for the cat and I love the cat uh, I don't love it at this point of the process though because uh, I don't really like the sketch all that much but I do fix it, don't worry about it. I start with a light gray color over pretty much the whole face as like a little bit of a undertone in a way. And I wanted cool colors for the cat because I wanted contrast with the face, like cool co colors on the cat, warm colors mostly on the lady. She also has some purple in there as well, which I will be reflecting in the cat as well to kind of continue with the purple theme. So uh, after I had done the initial first lightest layer of gray, I added my black coloring pencil because I want this cat to look really fussy. So I'm going to be using a lot of coloring pencils for this to kind of add texture and make it look more like a cat. Oh, and also the cat is going to be a black cat. Uh, but the reason I started with a gray is that I want to build up the layers and I didn't want anything to be completely white. So that's why I started with uh, gray as a background before adding in the uh, black fur and then after I add the black fur I will be adding a darker gray on top to kind of blend a little bit off that coloring pencil in and to make the cat just have an overall darker appearance. Here I start with the slightly darker gray color marker, which I add over the whole thing, over the initial uh, black or the first layer of black coloring pencil, which kind of blends a little bit out, which I like, because I will be adding even more texture on top of that later, and I don't want it to be too much. So blend the first layer out, make it look good. Uh, I put the marker on everything except for the eyes, which are going to be a different color later on, and except for the mouth, which of course is also going to be a different color. Here I am sharpening up that nose, making it look good, and then it's just a whole lot of layers of fur in different colors, mostly black, but then I also add that purple in there, the same purples that I used for the portrait to kind of have uh, the both of the portraits kind of fit a little bit more together. Here it is time for the mouth of the cat and I start with this very very light pink color that I put inside pretty much the whole mouth except for the teeth 
and I have a lot of references up of like cat mouths to try to get this right because I wanted the mouth to look a little bit less cartoony as well. Now I'm trying to make something that looks semi-realistic but not 100% realistic because I still want that cartoony, a little bit goofy element in there. Uh, and then I add the coloring pencils afterwards. So I start with this purple color, which I also use for the fur to, again, bring more of the same colors in there to make things look cohesive. And then I added this red color on top where it's supposed to be a little bit darker. And I do the same on both sides and sort of blend it out quite well. The tongues in the reference pictures often had a little bit of this blue purpley color in there. So I added this very light blue on top of the tongue and then I added some more of the pink to kind of blend it all out together and also make the shading in the tongue because the tongue is a little bit curled up. Then I use this pink color to make a little bit more shading and also to smooth things out a little bit. And I do the same uh, with the sides of the mouth with a purple color because I want a little bit more purple in there because I thought that tongue looked really good with the purple. Then I am adding the teeth back in because I forgot about them and I kind of painted over them or drew over them. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add some highlight to the little nose. I think the nose looks really cute and I like it. Then it is time for the eyes. The eyes are going to be yellow to get a little bit more of that warm colors in there. And also again, trying to match this portrait with the other portrait. So we're using the same colors. Uh, and yeah, I also was debating on just making the eyes empty like this. So at this point of the process, I was just debating on just being done with it, just making the whiskers and finish it up. But I decided that the cat m might need some pupils. So I actually just started by drawing in with a pencil to see if it looked good, um, like a normal pencil. But, and then I added the coloring pencils afterwards because I did like it very much. And I'm glad that I did because it makes that cat look a lot more alive and a lot more finished. Then I was also in my head finished, but the, there was this really big gap between the two portraits and I wanted to fill that in. So I'm making some really, really quick strawberry plants. So I sketched them quickly in. I uh, used my very, very cheap markers that I got from Tiger so, so many years ago and filled in the strawberry plants and then later add in some details with the coloring pencils. At this point of the process, I was getting bored and I wanted to be done. So I did not put all that much thought into the strawberries uh, or the strawberry plants. So I just kind of shaded it really quickly. I added some lines in there very roughly. And I'm not trying to make it look polished or good. This leaf is probably the best leaf that I made because after this one, I was like, nah, this is too much work. I also added some purple in there again, because I want more purple in this piece and I want the plants to match the cat and the girl. A little bit of highlight in the middle. I don't do that for all of the leaves because again, I'm getting incredibly bored of this. So quickly sketching this one, you can see it's quicker and not as detailed as the other leaves. A little bit of purple. Just the same process with all the leaves pretty much, except for this one or these small ones because I didn't even want to make details in them. So I just quickly shaded them. Added the little strawberries, which are just red blobs. Uh, I probably could have added some purple in there as well, or more purple than I did, maybe more bluish purple. But again, I wasn't uh, feeling like it. So here are the three strawberries. Then I add the seeds, because they gotta have the seeds, otherwise they're not gonna look like strawberries. And I also add a tiny bit of highlight on them as a little final touch, because I feel like shiny strawberries just look the best. Here is a final look of the whole page. And I'm really happy with it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video and I will see you again next week. Goodbye.